In this video, we're going to cover how to insert documents into a collection. So in SQL, to insert documents into a table, we said insert into the name of the table, specify the columns optionally, and then the values that would be then inserted into that table. In MongoDB, we would say db dot the name of the collection dot insert, and then in between the parentheses, we're going to have curly brackets, and then we'll have each field in quotes with a colon, and then the field value next to it. So for example, ID, colon, and then a number, and then field, colon, a value. For example, if we were to insert into the customer collection the customer BlueJ Inc. with the following address, we'd say db.customer.insert, and then we open the parentheses, open the curly bracket, and close the curly bracket at the end. Then we're going to have each column. So we have ID, 15, name, BlueJ Inc., address since this has multiple components we're going to start another array so we're going to have a square bracket and then a curly bracket and then we'll do the same thing inside of this this will be street with the street address city with the city state with the state and then zip code with the zip code so in mongodb you can optionally specify the identifiers or you can have it automatically create the identifiers so the identifiers are going to be represented using underscore id and this ID is generated using the following. The first few hexadecimal characters are going to come from the timestamp. The next are going to come from the machine ID, then the process ID, and then the counter. We merge all these together to generate what is called an object ID, and this is our unique identifier for that specific document. We can also import documents using a JSON file. So here's a sample JSON file that includes multiple documents that I want to insert. We have a customer named Contemporary Casuals and a customer named Value Furniture. So we're going to insert both of these. So in the notes pane of the slides, I have many more customers that we're going to insert. So what I want you to do is copy that from the notes pane, and then we'll go ahead and create a customer collection and insert all these documents into it. Okay, so here's the code from the notes pane. As you can see, I have db.customer.insert, and then I have all the different customers that I'm going to insert into this table. So I'll go ahead and run this query. It says that it's been executed successfully. We now have 14 documents that have been inserted. And if I go to the collections, we will see that inside the customer collection, I indeed have all the documents represented. And if you click on this array, you'll actually see their street, city, state, zip code that's all associated with the address there. In NoSQL, we're going to use what is called referencing or linking, or embedding. Now, referencing and linking is less common. Think of the relational database that we spent a bunch of time on is going to be similar to that, where we're going to have an object ID that is associated with, for example, a book, as you can see here. And then we're going to then create a review collection that is going to have object IDs for each one of those. Inside of that, we're going to have it reference a book ID using that object ID. So this object ID points to this object ID. And then inside of that, we're going to have comments about each review. And it's going to have its own object ID. And the object ID of the review ID inside of the comment is going to reference the object ID in the review. So this is similar to how we discussed this in SQL, but this is less common. What is more common is just embedding documents. And this only works with one to many relationships. So we have a book that we're going to then insert. And then when we get to the reviews, we're just going to do an embedded document. And then when we get to the comments, we're going to just do an embedded documents as well. And you saw this with the previous inserts that we have done. So in many to many relationships, we would then have like a user who belongs to multiple groups. So this group links over to this group and this group links down to this group. On the other side, we have the groups that have many users with the object ID of the users referencing this user and this user. So what I want you to do is try this learning activity. I want you to try to insert a new person into the person collection. This is going to be Meg Ryan with the information as you can see here. And then copy from the notes pane all the code from the JSON array to be able to insert more information into the person collection. So try this on your own, pause this video, and come back to compare your answer. All right, so here we are. I am going to just use the customer insert that we previously did. I'm going to change this to then insert into the person collection. So I'm going to just say db.person.insert. So we have a first name, we'll put Meg. We have a last name, we'll put Ryan. We have a date of birth, which we'll do 11-19-1961. We'll do hair color, which is blonde. We'll do occupation, which is actress. 
We'll do nationality, which is American. We'll do gender, which is female. And then we'll do children with the first name of the first child, Jack. And the last name of the first child is going to be Quaid. We'll get rid of this information. And then we'll copy this, put a comma, and then we'll add the next person, which is going to have a first name of Daisy and a last name of Ryan. We'll go ahead and run this. It says that one record was successfully inserted. And then I copied the rest of the code from the notes pane to be able to insert the rest of these actors and actresses. I'll run that. And we scroll down and that looks like it's successfully inserted. So let's go ahead and open up the person collection. And indeed we see that they've been inserted. We gave Meg Ryan her own unique ID. The rest had the ID automatically generated. You can see the values that are empty. This is like a hole. There's basically nothing tracked there. It's not null. It just means that we're not tracking children for Michael Caine at all. And so that's what this empty means. It's not the same as null as what we learned with the SQL environment. I can click on one of these arrays and we can see all the children.